Welcome to Minden, Nevada. My name is Randy Chirwood. I'm the Vice President and General Manager of Metrics Instruments. And today I'd like to show you a couple of features of our Setpoint Machinery Protection System. This system we've been shipping for about a year and a half now and we have over 150 installations really across the globe doing the fundamental protection of rotating machinery. Today I want to talk about the next exciting release for the Setpoint system and that is the Setpoint Condition Monitoring Software. Our Condition Monitoring Software is a, is a great enhancement to our Setpoint system in that now we can provide diagnostic, so, diagnostic information on machine condition to our users around the world. The way our Setpoint Condition Monitoring System works is it'll take data from a vibration probe which is connected to our Setpoint Condition Monitoring System it moves that data via communications networks that are dedicated strictly to the condition monitoring uh, task through our, our central processing unit called the SAM and then it, that data moves to a computer that's running OSI soft PI historic, historian software. We're the first vibration company that is, that is moving actual dynamic waveform data to a PI historian, which is the most common historian in the industry today, and allowing our customers to take that waveform data and view that data with a variety of different tools and be able to see the FFT spectral information, the orbit data, the, the, the waveform data, and the trend data. So let's take a little closer look at the architecture we have here. I mentioned before that we have a rotor kit with sensors. This is a small mo small machine model mounted behind our racks here actually that has eddy current sensors actually monitoring the vibration of a shaft. Both sensors are connected to the universal monitoring modules in this flush mounted panel and the universal monitoring modules are actually doing all of the monitoring tasks associated with conditioning and powering and using those vibration sensors. Looking at our small 4P rack which can do typically eight channels of vibration, I can pull out a universal monitoring module and take a quick look at it. We've got an input for all of the vibration sensors, position sensors, process variable sensors, pressure sensors that our customers need to monitor rotating and reciprocating machinery. Those sensors are, are checked to make sure they're okay, they're powered. You don't need anything besides a UMM to connect to a sensor. The sensors are then connected to our central processing unit here, which compares those sensors, extracts the, the, the essential elements out of that vibration signal, and drives alarms, hence we compare to the set points, that's kind of where the name came from. This UMM is completely self-contained in that you can provide 24 volts on the back of it, and you can actually close the loop with wires and have the outputs drive the inputs through the relays and through the analog to 20 milliamp outputs. So this monitor without any of the other infrastructure of the rack is a completely self-contained four-channel monitor. When we plug it into the rack we have sensors connected to the, to the front of the monitor that are actually measuring vibration. Now this becomes more than just a monitor, it becomes a machinery management system. The UMM moves data once it's digitized in the processor down the rack to a module that we call the System Access Module, or SAM. The SAM's got an ARM processor running Linux that is actually taking all the data from all these monitors and moving that data to a couple places. One place is to an Ethernet port that's typically connected to Modbus. The second place is to a Windows 7 processor that it doesn't have anything to do with the protection of the rack. What Windows is good at doing is displaying and communicating. We didn't want a Windows operating system in our critical path, in the path that protects your machinery. You can remove this whole card or this processor, it won't affect the reliability of your actual vibration set points. So once we get the data down the back plane to our ARM processor, to our Windows processor, that then connects via the CAT5 cable here coming out the front of our demonstration rack to our, to our Pi processor. Now a few days ago the development team here in Nevada reached a significant milestone and that's the milestone of actually collecting real data from a rotated machine, processing it through a UMM, 
this piece, connecting that UMM with actual waveform data streaming from the rotor kit to our SAM, from our SAM arm to our Windows 7 processor, from our Windows 7 processor to the Pi Historian. Once the data is in the Historian, it's historized, it's there forever. And now the key is to be able to look at that data. So there's a couple ways to do that. A very common way is to use a tool called Pi Process Book, which is a very common historian used in operations uh, units and plants really around the world. Pi Process Book is very powerful, but it isn't very good at looking at vibration data. So we're developing here in our development team an application that runs on top of Pi that is our, is our setpoint CMS viewer. And here this viewer is showing a machine train diagram that's got machine statuses on it so you can kind of get oriented. And we've got a couple of actual waveforms that are actually being collected from that rotor kit. And we've actually got a trend. So what I'd like to do now is actually change the conditions of our rotating machinery so we can actually see the data changing on our condition monitoring software viewer. So Cho is going to go ahead and speed up our rotor kit for me. You'll hear the rotor kit accelerating. And right now, the way our kit system's currently configured, we're grabbing one waveform every 10 seconds. So we'll be able to see the waveforms decrease in, or increase in frequency, decrease in period. We'll see the shape change slightly as this shaft accelerates. And we can actually see our trend graph actually increasing the two overall vibration levels for the two channels we're showing here as the rotor kit continues to accelerate. Joe, you might want to slow us down a little bit here as we accelerate. As we deaccelerate, we should see the amplitude go back down and the actual waveforms uh, decrease in frequency and the period increase. We can take these two waveforms now. Once the waveforms are stored in the Pi Historian, we can run an FFT on them. So we can do full spectral, cascade, waterfall kind of presentations. We can take the two waveforms, display them in an XY format show an orbit. We, we have some of the best historian tools to manage this data and to be able to display it over time. So thanks for the time and for listening to me for a few minutes. We're really excited about our set point condition monitoring system. We think we've reached a very significant milestone. We expect to be delivering this software in early summer with betas before that. So we hope that, that this has been interesting and you're, you're like what you saw.